Hello folks, welcome. Today we're diving into ranking email applications. This is a more of a useful guide of what email apps are like in a quick summary, but also sharing my opinions on how I view them in the space. We've got a few email applications and I'm excited to dive into today's video. Today we're sponsored by ClickUp. ClickUp is fast, reliable and easy way to set up for projects. It's also super flexible and a great way for a team to set anything up from scratch or using their fabulous templates. You can check it out in the link in the description. We've also launched a brand new channel called Keep Productive with ClickUp. So you can check that out in the link in the description. And if you're not subscribed to us yet, it'd be amazing to have you. So here we are with my tier maker. We're going to start with Polymail. So Polymail is an application that is, well, had a lot of popularity a few years ago, but it was more focused on teams now. It, it started being much more of a, let's compete with some of the more personal productivity email applications like Hey, like Spark, but then it sort of spiraled into becoming much more of a collaborative email experience. And to be honest, from using it, I'm impressed, but I'm not vastly impressed. So I'm gonna go with good. It's good. It does a good job of what it does at helping you connect with other team members, but also taking and making some beautiful emails as you write them. The pricing is a little bit higher, than say some of the other applications, but again, something to have a look out for when you're looking for collaborative email options. Next up is Spike. Now this application goes into an epic status just for the sake that more recently they've been developing some really interesting technologies in there, but it's also one of these apps that if you like communicating like you do on apps like Slack, in a conversational sense, then Spike is gonna be one of those apps that will do well for you. It's more of a messaging-like email application that has some cool functionality with documents than it is, say, a traditional email structure uh, like some of the other ones that we'll experience in a moment. So if you're looking for that more open option, then that's gonna be better for you. It's got a good free plan, has some good alternative pro plans, and it also does come very well rated on most app stores as a really reliable experience. I've used it in the past and I found it very good to be uh, for the messaging side of stuff. And I was surprised how well it worked and how speedy it worked too, especially if you've got somebody else who's using Spike on the other end it is a lot faster that way. Next up is Spark, and Spark instantly goes into Epic. It's a reliable and fast email application, and it's developed by one of my favorite productivity developers, Riedel, who have made some fantastic tools and apps in the past, and they've more recently added some team abilities to Spark that are just fantastic. It's a great free application for personal users, but there are some upgrades for if you want in there, but it's great for triage as well. A simple triage, but also uh, more in depth triage if you do want to go into more detail. You've also got, next up, Newton. I, crazily, I worked at Newton a few years ago as a marketing consultant, so it's very weird that I'm now looking at this retrospectively. Newton, in my opinion, goes in good. Now, in terms of design, it's a really well put together application. They've also introduced some features more recently that calms you down in your email, which I think is a good approach to email for sure. It's a great balance between being a super human like application, very much more premium, but also sort of getting you off started with sort of simple um, email application. And it's priced at about, about, about that, sort of the middle ground pricing in the productivity space right now. Actually a little bit cheaper than say hey.com and things like that. But Newton goes in a good status. I wouldn't put it in Epic just because they have been bought and sold a few times in the last few years. So there is that instability in it, but they haven't actually been bought for a while or sold for a while, so that's good news and they seem to be doing quite well with updates. Next up is Hey. Again, I think this goes into epic status. This application is a really well thought out process based email and it's probably the most productivity based email out there. And what I mean by that is it helps you to do, basically follow a structure that they have recommended like an im box, like an important box, and helping you to coordinate who actually goes in your inbox, which is nice. That's what's nice about it, but it also shoots email into different locations so that you can check them as and when you find suitable. And the technology around that is something that a lot of email apps have done well, 
some email apps haven't done so well at. But I think Hey.com's got that nice balance between being reliable, but also a, a application that focuses on helping you to be a bit more mindful about your email. You do, once you pay the $99 a year, you do get a free Hey.com email. And if you do commit to that, even if you don't fancy it after the last year, first year, they do actually push you onto, they basically forward every email from that's sent to hey.com to Gmail forever, which is pretty decent. So there's no real risk in actually setting it up for a year and then actually after a year being like, okay, that's not something that suits me. But at the same time, it does have that ability. If you do worry about that hey.com email being like a commitment and it's not really, it's definitely something different. Uh, so I'm going to put Airmail air in there. It was a really well-produced application back in uh, 2017, but I feel email applications have progressed pretty rapidly, and it's not something that I'm particularly looking at it on my radar. It's reliable, it's great for Mac, but it's not something that has progressed since then, but still very nice. So Outlook, again, good. They continue to invest in this application. It is really beautiful in terms of the way that they designed it. They brought on board a lot of the Sunrise developers, the old calendar application that Microsoft bought, and it does look good and feels good, especially with the new Outlook boards as well, looking very impressive in terms of managing your personal productivity and keeping on top of team productivity too. So Missive, um, I'm going to put Missive in, um, it's in between Epic and Good. I'm gonna say good. I used Mistive for about three years and it's great for reliability. I found it super speedy and fast, but also it was good for like the collaborative experience. So if you have somebody that you wanna bring on as a VA or somebody in your team you want to handle emails, could be customer support emails, then this is a great application, but it also has that layer of personal productivity in terms of setting it up. And the settings inside of Missive are absolutely extensive. Probably one of the most extensive settings menus I've ever seen in my life. And that's great if you're looking for customization of your email application and something that you might want to go a little bit further on. Next up is the email application I use and I'm going to put it in Epic. I love Superhuman. I've been using it for almost a year now and it, to be honest, revolutionized the way that I used my productivity in terms of email. A lot over the last year, my emails changed a lot. So actually the last two years, I've, been, I've now spent a lot more time doing email than I did before. Um, I now am very lucky to have employed an editor, my good friend Steve, and um, I don't spend as much time editing and a lot of my time now on negotiating things and communicating projects and things like that. And I spend twice as much time as I do an email, although I try to keep my distance from it sometimes. <laughs> but Superhuman is fast and it's reliable and it's just, if you've ever used it, you'll be mind blown at how good it actually is. Uh, as a collective. So I definitely recommend checking it out. But remember, the pricing plan for it is pretty decently high. It's much more designed for those who are, I would say freelance or those who are in a team that invest a lot in email communication or those who have um, maybe a larger budget for their personal productivity email side of stuff. So it's really much more designed for those who spend more time on email as a sort of get out the way experience for, for that. So this is my opinion on email applications on the market. All of them are good, uh, one of them meh, but all of them are, are, are solid options in the space right now. I'll probably do a more in-depth one in January to dive into more email applications. So do stay tuned for that and make sure you subscribe here on the channel. So folks, a big, big thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you to ClickUp for sponsoring this feature and I'll see you very soon in another video. Thanks folks, cheerio.